Standing right here holding the gun, and Gunther kept coming at me. I knew if he got hold of me, that'd be the end of me. Well, you did the obvious thing. You pulled the trigger. No, see, we struggled for the gun. He pulled the trigger. But he wasn't shot. You see, they had switched my live ammunition for blanks, and I was framed. See, this whole thing was staged. Scott or Whitney, the impersonator, staged his first murder, and then he pulled the real one later. Now, see, he shot Gunther and led me to believe, along with the rest of the world, that I was a killer. I guess that's why I get the creeps every time I walk in here and remember what happened. God. Gentlemen, can we help you? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, looking for a guy named Jim Diedrichson. Yeah, it's me. It can't be. He's dead. What's wrong, Gavin? Who the hell are you? The name is Wagner, Gunther Wagner. Gunther's dead. Well, uh, what's the matter? Don't you believe in ghosts? I'm a ghost. <laughs> Jody, you've really got to stop this habit of staring at that painting. It is not healthy. Oh, Nicole, I'm just very interested in this right now. Especially since I know what it means and what it signifies. You know what Miles suggested to me last night? What? The possibility of putting the painting away for a while in storage or something, just until you can get your mind off of it. Do you think that's really going to work? I can't forget about that painting, and I certainly can't forget what Viva and Pietro told me. Jody, you have no proof that what they said was true. No, I don't have proof, but I do have a feeling. <sighs> Please don't jump to conclusions. We have so little information about what they claim. Why? Does some of this bother you? What is it? Do you think they're lying about Mr. Endicott or something? Well, I have to admit, I find it very hard to believe that a man like Mr. Endicott is involved with criminals. Look, I find it very hard to believe myself. Now, let's see here. What are you doing? You know, in a second. Edelman, Edelson, Edelstein, Edelstein. Eden. Eden, they weren't lying. There really is such a place. What place? Oh, well, an official offices of the Republic of Eden. Well, maybe that means they have an ambassador there. I, I, I could find out more from him. In fact, I'm sure I could. my boss to give me a chance to see it. Your boss? Who's your boss? Uh, Skyler Whitney, Mr. Diedrichson. I think you know who he is. This is too much. Sky Whitney back from the dead and dragging Gunther with him? Come on, what's the gag? Uh, I didn't catch your name, Sonny. It isn't Sonny. It's Gavin Wiley. And if you are the ghost of Gunther, you ought to know that name. Oh, Gavin Wiley, huh? Oh, so you're the one that did it, huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> Is this some kind of a joke, Gavin? I mean, you did this all for a laugh. You don't see me laughing, do you? Oh, uh, excuse me, but didn't you come to see me? Uh, yeah, that's right. I, uh, I came to give you something. Uh, Mr. Whitney wants you to look those over. If you like what you see, uh, sign both copies and send them back to him. Where do I send them back? To the Whitney house. Where else? The Raven's house. That's the Whitney house, Mr. Diedrichson. You know where that is. Yes, I know where that is. Well, he also wants me to give you these uh, keys to the theater. Thanks. You still don't believe it, do you? Tell me what you did. Did you go over to that 
plastic surgery clinic like your boss? Will somebody please tell me what's going on here? Why? Who are you? Chad Sutherland. I'm a painter. I work here with Mr. Diedrichson. Oh, a painter. Huh. I met lots of painters in Paris. The streets are crawling with them. Mm. Well, at least you paint pretty girls. Who's the model? Just a girl. Mm. Well, listen, uh, the next time you uh, have her pose for you, let me know, will you? Especially if she poses in the, uh, well, in her bikini, know what I mean? She happens <laughs> to be my girlfriend. No kidding? Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember the story. They said that uh, there was a fight over some girl. Well, she looks like she does. No wonder. Uh, look, Mr. <laughs> Wagner, or whatever your name the is. The name is Gunther. I told you that. And you know, I've just been waiting to meet the guy who pulled the trigger. And hey, look, Gavin said he didn't shoot him. It was his boss who did Shut it. up. I was told that you pulled the trigger, Wiley, that you started the whole thing. I didn't start anything. I was set up. Hey, wait a minute. Let's just cool down here. I don't know where you got your story, but I think you had to get your facts straight. Who asked you to butt in, Diedrichson? I invited myself. Forget it, Jim. Let him say what he wants to say. Yeah, I have a lot to say. The guy who died here was my brother. He called himself Gunther, but his real name was Bruno. And I want to do something about it. I want to shake your hand, Sid. Hmm? Come on, kid. <laughs> then you've already moved out of the house, Geraldine? I, I had no idea it was going to happen so soon. Chris, I thought it would take weeks to get that settled properly. Well, we should have had more time, of course. But I'm afraid Skylar turned into a very angry nephew. Mm -hmm. Does Raven know? Oh, have you spoken to her lately? Is she still at one of those health resorts? Oh, yes, yeah, she's still there. But she wouldn't tell me which one. She was afraid I'd phone her and argue about staying away so long at a time like this. Mm. So she has no idea that you've left? None whatsoever. She did know that Skylar was very impatient. Well, after all, you uh, really can't blame him. He suffered through a whole year trying to be recognized as the legitimate Whitney heir. Now that that's been firmly established, it's only logical he'd claim what's rightfully his. Which means practically everything that Raven thinks is hers. I had to leave everything of Raven's at the house. Not by choice, mind you. Skylar demanded it. Which means she'll have to go there to the house and argue her case item by item? I dread the thought, Mike, but I'm afraid it's going to include every dress, every pair of shoes, every piece of jewelry Raven owns. No, he isn't going to be that severe. I'm afraid so. She'll just have to learn to live without those things. Well, I might venture to say, Geraldine, if I know Raven, she isn't going to give up without a fight. <laughs> You're quite right, my dear. Right now, she is preparing to do battle. Oh, I am so hungry. I ran three miles this morning. <laughs> I have not had anything but a glass of orange juice. Well, that exercise really makes you hungry, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Here you are. Thank you. <laughs> this is lunch. <laughs> I've never eaten a carrot in my life. Please, will you take this back and bring me back some food? I mean, I came here to get beautiful, not to starve. Those are the rules of the spa. <laughs> Who cares about the rules of the spa? I want some lunch! It's no use. No one's answering. I wonder if they went out of business. Never mind that. Just come over here and have your lunch. Oh, you know what else it could be? Maybe there's some kind of a, I don't know, a holiday in Eden. They close the, the offices for the day. <laughs> I guess that's possible. Anyway, this is the address, 101 Victory Boulevard. Victory Boulevard, do you know where that is? Mm-hmm. But that's all residential. I guess they could have offices in one of those townhouses. I think I'll take a walk over there this afternoon. Why don't you just take a nice, leisurely walk in the park instead? Hi, Gavin. Hi, Nicole. Oh, I'm glad to see you finally got her to eat. Well, I got her to look like she's eating. How are you? Mm -hmm. Fine. You feel a little normal? Yep. Want some of this food? Oh, no thanks. Uh, my stomach's not doing too great right now. I just saw something that spoiled my appetite. What was that? Well, I went to the old studio. 
Jim had asked me over to talk. It seems that the new Skylar Whitney has agreed to let Jim use the Whitney Theater. Well, that's good news. That is. That's terrific. So are you going to direct for them again? Well, it's not that simple, sweetheart. Well, I don't understand. I mean, that, that would mean you could stay here. You wouldn't have to go out of town for directing jobs. It could mean that. Um, but that's a question of economics, things like that. But that's not the important thing. The thing that made the visit so unusual was the man who gave Jim the keys to the Whitney Theater. What's that? Like this? Oh, nothing. Not Consulate of Eden, 101 Victory Boulevard, 555-8772. Why are you calling the consulate? I was just curious, that's all. No, I really see. I didn't even get an answer. I think they're closed for the summer. I thought you were going to try to forget the whole thing. Oh, Gavin, she was just curious. We had no idea there was a consulate here. It seems to me the best thing to do is to forget that the entire country exists. Well, now, that's ridiculous, because it does exist, and you can't just forget about it. Well, then coexist with it. Or forget that you have anything to do with it, which I still doubt. Well, look, I didn't mean anything by it. All I, all I was going to do was walk over there this afternoon and take a look at the building. Well, you can forget that, too. Really? Really? Jody, you told me you were going to drop the whole thing and leave it up to the police and the politicians to figure out. Now you're talking about getting in contact with the consulate? I didn't say that. All I said was I was going over there to look at the building, and if you think you can stop me, go ahead and try. Thanks for lunch, Nicole. Well, you know, I think I feel like a little walk this afternoon. Mind if I join you? Look, of Stoner, just exactly what you were doing in my office. Uh, well, I was just um, looking for some paper, that's all. See, I, I wanted to leave my sister a note telling her I came by to see her. I see. Well, I uh, hope the uh, problem with your vision is nothing permanent, Troy, since the uh, pad's been sitting right on top of the desk the entire time. <laughs> yeah, what do you know about that? Yeah, you know, it's funny, isn't it, the way something can be right in front of your eyes the whole time and you can't see it. <laughs> yeah, funny, isn't it? I take it Dee Dee didn't know that you were coming by here today. You know, you got my letter, didn't you? Yes, I got your letter. I knew you were getting out of... I knew that you were coming to see me, but you didn't mention the exact day. Then I will mention it now. It's today. Yeah, well, uh, look, Dee Dee, since obviously you're busy, why don't we postpone our meeting till some other time, okay? Yes, Calvin, maybe we should. Oh, look, Nancy, I hate for you to leave on my account, Detective uh, Stoner, wasn't it? Yeah, that's <laughs> well, right. It was nice meeting you anyway. Uh, you know, this is the first time I ever got frisked by a cop and then shook his hand. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll, uh, see you later. Yeah, goodbye, Calvin. Uh, well, congratulations. You almost pulled off the neatest trick of the week. Getting yourself arrested the day after you get yourself released. Well, is he your boyfriend, Dee Dee? No, he is not my boyfriend. He is a police officer, and he was here to see me about a client. And it's a good thing he's a very, very nice man, because you might have ended up being one of my clients, too. Wait, you once said you can't handle your own brother's cases. And it's a good thing, too, because I like innocent defendants. You wouldn't handle a case of mine, no matter what, Dee Dee, since you don't care that much about what happens to me. Troy. Don't say that because it isn't true, and you know it's not fair. Look, you haven't seen me in over a year. And what kind of reception do I get? I get frisked by that cop friend of yours and put down by you. Look, you know, maybe I should have just stayed away. Well, maybe you should have. Troy! Troy, I'm sorry. You know I'm glad to see you. Dee Dee, I didn't have anywhere else to go but here. Look, I, I had to get out of that place. I'm glad you're here. And like I told you in my letter, I'm going to do everything that I can to help you. But Troy, you've got to help me too, okay? Now will you please, will you please try a little harder this time? Now, look, before you say yes, make sure that you mean it. Look, Troy. 
Will you try to make an honest living for a change? Oh, <laughs> Troy. <gasps> Come on, Lou, there's got to be a way that you can trace the ownership of an art gallery. Look, will you do this for me? His name is Endicott. Thanks a lot. I knew I could count on you. Did I hear you say Endicott? That's right. I'm trying to trace the true ownership of the Endicott art gallery. Oh, I can tell you that. His daughter Grace owns it. Well, that's what I thought. Now I'm not so sure she ever owned it. Guess who's really in charge now? Well, I know her father's abroad. From there, I'm afraid you're just gonna have to fill me in. You better hold on to your chair. Try Eddie Lorimer. Eddie Lorimer? That's right. Look, I went to talk to Grace about her father. See if I could get some information on this accusation we heard that he was somehow tied into the mob here. And you're gonna tell me that you found the mob itself sitting there? <laughs> My man, somebody is trying to pull your leg. Hey, wait a minute, Calvin. Poppy Johnson was sitting right there. I mean, she was at that reception desk, sitting just like she did over at the uh, junkyard. She's the one who told me that Eddie Lorimer has bought the art gallery. Are you kidding? Whoa! I mean, first a junkyard and now an art gallery. I mean, that's what I call diversification. Well, maybe a lot more than that. I mean, it could be that this guy who kidnapped Jody, this Pietro, was telling the truth. Maybe Endicott really is linked to the mob in this town. Well, I don't know if that's exactly proof, Tyler. Dwight Endicott and Eddie Larm. Well, it certainly does make it interesting enough to check it out now, doesn't it? Okay. Thanks very much. I think we could probably have another bottle, don't you? Yes, please. Yes. Well, Chad, I know what you want to hear. You want to know why my father left so suddenly. It must have been unexpected. You know, I talked to him the day before he left. He was curious as to see, you know, how Jody's portrait was coming along. But he never mentioned anything about leaving. Well, it was a business matter. Uh, father has and has always had extensive holdings in Eden, and a situation came up, and um, he was in danger of losing his estate. So naturally he flew down to take care of it. Yes, I can understand that. That must leave you with a lot of responsibilities. Oh, <laughs> too much, I'm afraid. What do you mean? Well, I, I've decided to leave the gallery, Chad. You're leaving the gallery? Yes. In fact, it's been sold. Just like that? Well, it wasn't just like that. Um, Father had the offer a long time ago, and naturally it was a temptation, seeing as we've been losing money from the beginning. Yeah, I knew that, but I never thought money was the issue. Oh, no, darling, money's always the issue, the primary issue. Uh, originally, Father hadn't wanted to sell it to this man because he thought that he was culturally unaware. But now he's been forced to sell it, so I'm going to leave. I'm sorry to hear that. You must be terribly disappointed. No, I wouldn't say disappointed is the word. I'm frightened. Should we go in? The door's open. No kidding. I still think you're crazy. All right, doesn't look like anybody's here. Well, what do you think we should do? Yell for service? No, I think we should clear our throats a lot. Okay. Okay, you first. <coughs> <coughs> Forget it. This isn't going to work. You're Just wrong. Look. What? Yes, can I help you? Uh, yeah, uh, we were wondering if there was someone we could talk to about the Republic of Eden. What is it you wish to know? Well, just about as much as we could learn. Yeah, you see, uh, we're going on a trip there. A vacation. Mm. <laughs> I see. I'm sure you realize that this is a consulate, not a tourist office. Let me give you an address that you can write to. Well, no, wait a second. Actually, what we really wanted to do was we wanted to talk to somebody in government because we want to find out about the politics of your country. Yeah, you see, we're students. And uh, we're taking a postgraduate course in political science. And uh, this is our summer assignment. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I won't be able to help you there. Why don't you try the public library? Well, well wait a second. Uh, there is an ambassador, isn't there, Mr... My name is Winks. The ambassador's name is Jonathan Groves. 
and I'm afraid there's simply no way you're going to get to see him. Well, what about one of his assistants? I am Mr. Grove's chief aide, and I'm afraid I can't help you either. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't there some sort of officer of information? No, there is not. You see, we are a small country, therefore this is a small consulate. Well, then maybe you could talk to us. No, I'm afraid I have no time. In fact, you could have never come to call at a worse time. There is a very important dinner party at the consulate this evening, and I have a thousand things to do. So, if you would please excuse me. Uh, yeah, uh, well, sorry to have bothered you. And, uh, I would forget about trying to see the ambassador if I were you. He'll be leaving in the first thing in the morning. We're closing the consulate for the rest of the summer. Well, at least we tried. The whole summer. Gavin, that's awful. I've got to see the ambassador. Well, what can we do? Crash the party? Uh-oh. Something tells me I shouldn't have said that. 